This is hunting for purple streetlights in Kansas City. Video 237, Exhibit A. We're at about the 12 minute mark or so on the non-exhibit video, which is titled Hunting for Purple Streetlights in Kansas City. Video 237, without the exhibit and the A. Um, I am at Blue Ridge Boulevard right here. I'm walking parallel to it right now. This is a frontage road with I-49. I-49 is ahead of us here, also known as US-71. There is a purple street light. You might be able to see that purplish color there. That's from a street light that we cannot really see right now because the angle of the LED panel. But I'm going to zoom in on that LED panel and I want to see how the LED pattern of um, defective purple LEDs has changed with time. I think the last time I saw this was at least a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago almost. I can't quite remember. I think it was in video 208 or 209, one of the exhibit videos. I think it was A, where I looked at a purple street light that's supposed to be down there. If it isn't, let's see. Probably still is, but it's not in view yet. But we're gonna look at this one first. Actually, there's no real reason to look at the other one because it's just all blue. Yeah, it's still there. At exit 180, down there, there's a very, very purple street light. I don't think it has as many LEDs as this one, if I remember right, but. So we're gonna look at this purple street light here. Um, I wanna first look at some of the landmarks here. Okay, so first we have CBS Pharmacy. I'm gonna get the sign on, okay, this is Community America. This actually might be one as well, actually. So we're actually gonna zoom in on this other LED panel as well. These lights are a minority, guys, and they keep ending up in important locations. Like here, this is just west, of I-49. Now, wind right now, though, is blowing actually in the other direction, which is not as common. But even in this scenario, there will be purple street lights in locations probably that would accommodate this as well, is my guess. But I mostly look at it as if the wind is blowing from the west. This right now is an exception. Um, in this case, if something dropped out of the sky and expanded and like blew up like a gas bomb or something like that, this whole area would have whatever that is like whether it's actual chemical or it would have like the dispersing gases out of the like the little clusters of shells basically that drop oh my shit gone i wasn't thinking about where it's gonna go next i was talking anyway in that scenario it's actually probably even close enough to that but the range that i'm usually talking about when it's like upwind a lot of times it's like 3,000. 200 feet or so or less sometimes even up to a mile west of the evacuation routes and i believe that it's on purpose um i've seen so many examples though like i know we're like basically about 200 or more locations are for purple street lights in the kansas city area right now so i'm going off of all those locations when i say this it seems like it's set up for wind like blowing from the west at least I don't really think about the east actually. Um, it should also be something interesting to look at. But it's not a coincidence. Just just believe me guys, it is not a coincidence. Um, don't just believe me. Look at it. And think about how wind usually blows. Uh, the reason I'm swaying like this is to be able to predict like which LEDs might turn purple fast and sometimes we can guess at the pattern that might emerge with the LEDs. What I'm saying probably sounds dumb or abstract to a lot of people. I don't know what to say to you, but I've been doing this research for 21 months, guys, and I know reasonably confident about what I'm saying, guys, that there is a conspiracy. It is set up for a chemical attack on our evacuation and pro-evacuation routes to stop us from leaving our city. 
under certain circumstances or make it easier for our cities to be invaded for some reason. Because of censorship, if you don't believe me, just, just give it a whirl, guys. Look up Purple Street Lights and see how many hits you get for, for it. And listen to watch as many videos as you can. See if you can even find my video, which is kind of funny because you already would have found it. But how many of my videos can you find? Try using YouTube filters to find ones from like almost a year ago or even like more than a month ago and see how that works for you because I have like about 300 videos, guys. See what you can actually find without going to my actual page once. Try it. Okay, so this light is at an angle, which makes it a good idea to probably check this from different angles, but both panels before we're showing some level of purple on them. I see this a lot, where there's a white panel and it still ends up having purple LEDs on it. Notice that they're separated from each other, so you, it's not an effective heat, right? What is it, guys? They, they knew this, but if you were not zooming in on this, you would just think, wow, it's kind of purple, right? Would you know that there are actually two purple LED panels that could just split up and put somewhere else? They could have farmed them and actually maybe even made money off them or sold them or used them. They're like a commodity, guys. Don't believe what you're told. Look at it yourself. And when you try to tell other people about it, I hope you realize that uh, there's a problem. Guys. Censorship has to stop. It has to go, guys. I'm actually surprised at the fact that we still only have that one LED on the left side there. I thought there would be more than that. By the way, this light, this purple street light, was, was just like a white light basically back in, uh, oh, even like, I wanna say June. I barely, I barely noticed it in like July, maybe. I, I'm trying to remember. I can't quite remember which video it was, but like, well, I actually remember 34 is when I proved it was one, but a video just shortly before 34 is when I wondered about it. And I watched the video and annotated it. And I'm like, you know what? That's probably a purple street light. So I came and I zoomed in on it with my other camera before I found that it was one, but it was barely noticeable. And that was even then, when I first started making the videos, like maybe video one, you can check and see if you can even see that light as purple at all. Um, also video, I wanna say video five? There's a video where I drove in this area also, like in the single digits, where I don't think it was at all apparent that that light was purple. So that means that those LEDs that we see, presumably those have become purple over a span of about six months, like that. The white panel, I'm actually surprised, is very slowly changing. I expect though, from the observations I've already made, uh, to see all the LEDs eventually turn purple if I was able to observe the whole time. Even if, even the patterns that emerge first Eventually, all the LEDs are turned Okay, so we are at that time on there. 2046, I think is what it said. Um, we are located right, oops. I'm still looking at my big monitor. I've been doing that all day. Okay, so um, that's north of where we're at. We're right. Okay, I'm usually not this bad at this. I don't know why. Oh, there it is, right there, right there. Okay, this is Blue Ridge. 
This is the light that we just looked at. Those are notes from early, early on, that you can, you can go and you can check the non-exhibit videos there. I even did an exhibit video, I didn't do the notes for it, but um, I recently uploaded it because I actually never uploaded it uh, from my other camera. I didn't use my other camera very often, and I had a bunch of other stuff from Florida even on it, so I hadn't um, uploaded it to YouTube at that time. This is the really blue one that I showed you earlier. That's down there that we can't see right now. Um, so yeah. And then this is a mall right here. This is not bad for wind. I mean, there's these buildings, okay? Like right here. But still, there's some space, enough that wind might actually blow across this. And basically, the the faster wind that's higher up can, can actually get lower, basically. So it could suck some of this up, kind of like a low pressure area in this area, okay? If you keep looking, you'll just keep seeing this trend. Okay, so that's for that light though. This is this one right here, and still, this is probably lower friction than areas where you have like a bunch of trees, for example. It's pervasive, guys, it's everywhere. Some of these lights, by the way, just so you know, they're not there anymore if they got replaced. Like uh, this one got replaced, but I keep it on the map, I need to add it to a list saying it's been replaced. In fact, I may have actually added that one. Yeah, I already did add that one, but there are a couple that I have to add on here. Um, so this is a, a perfect map, okay, but this is actually almost all the lights. Um, if there are some lights, they're just really early stage ones that I just saw recently in my exhibit videos, um, but I have added a lot of those. And you might be like, well, that doesn't mean anything to you. Well, actually, if you've watched my videos, you'll see, um, that I'm pretty serious about like where I put these lights and make sure that they're put in the right places. I looked in all these neighborhoods except for, and I still gotta go back there and look in like one or two dead ends over here. And that's it. Like I've looked in these neighborhoods guys and they didn't have purple street lights and they have them right here by a hill, like on the edges of the hill and area where there's a body of water. These two even right here, if you look at these and you think about wind, like, let's go to 3D here, for example. And since I only have one hand, if you look at this, the wind friction drops here in this whole area. It's simpler geometrically, excuse me, and so wind can blow better. They don't act, they do not haphazardly put these here, guys. Even this one right here, individually, is like right here, and this is an open area. You might think nothing of it, but this right here, I can't change the angle right now because it takes both hands to do that. But this is kind of like a hill and they have like a golf course here with lower wind friction. Um, they put these in the, the no outlets on this hill. And this is also like a hill here and they also put it on the edges. They had one right here that was in a prime kind of location by the water. And they changed this one out. This one had more LED panels than all the other ones. These All these other ones have 10. This one had like at least, I want to say at least 20, but I never got to see how many were on it. But it was really, really bright. And I know it had multiple panels. After looking at the videos, I looked at multiple videos and I have my same expression that I have when they use too many panels on the lights. I had the same expression. Um, these are just some examples. I spent my whole, like I spent like the whole last couple of weeks going through my exhibit videos and looking at these points and where they are. Like one of the areas I've looked at recently uh, when I went back, is like this, right here, where they put these lights here. This is not haphazard, guys. This is a lower wind friction area. This is also lower wind friction for wind blowing this way, because there are fewer trees. Yeah, there's some trees there, but it, it's actually lower wind friction. These right here are, are next to a lot, where it's lower wind friction. These don't seem like, you know, they're that way, but there's the road. But check it out. There, 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 there. If it blows west, it's going to blow over this if they have to take these other ones down. You, know, you might be like, well, that's that's ad hoc. Well, no, not really. If you just keep looking at the map, we have these two here, and they're by an open area again that would blow this direction. This one right here is by a school again. I've looked down all these roads, guys, okay? We have this one here, so the wind is like lower friction if it's blowing this direction. Even if they took these other ones down, there's there are contingencies. They set this up with contingencies. These three right here are all in no outlets next to each other and they're right by this point, guys. It's not an accident. This right here, there's a body of water, low friction. 
when it blow across this and cut this part off probably all the way to hedge at least um this one right here even if they took these lights down we still got one right there and it's still low friction it would blow across this area it would probably still blow across spruce even this one if you look at this scale here there's fewer trees just keep looking guys i know that may not be enough for you to believe it let me let me just show you one more which i think is really interesting you have to do a little bit of research and look at the roads and look at the terrain yourself but look at this where they put these here these four here are contingency they're back up they're on a hill this one is not on a hill this is actually in a lower elevation right here but still they have this one on the road right and they also have this one that's up up higher but these are up on a hill guys they did not accidentally do this they don't have any here they just have them right here they knew what they were doing when they put them up trust me you are being lied to okay if someone's telling you that they're not on purpose they are absolutely on purpose guys they cooked them up and literally let them cook up and creep up slowly becoming purple and emitting a frequency of a spectrum that is highly refractive ultraviolet light refracts really well that's why you when you look up in the sky during the day it's bluer that's bluer light that's scattered some of it you cannot see um but if as the sun starts to go down if you look towards the dark side of the sky you'll see that it looks kind of purple even when you see like a really dark storm right it's kind of purple right that violet color yeah that color is the stuff that still refracts anyway that still ends up somehow in the cloud bouncing around and bouncing back over to you it refracts that well so there's a reason they use that frequency of light guys that can be detected the ultraviolet light you cannot see from that but on the camera when you move around and look at the leds like i did before you'll see that there are trail like if you played a 0.25x and you go through the frames on youtube if you press like the the period button or the comma button to navigate through individual frames you'll see what i'm saying you can see the trail of fluorescence on the camera uh, before it fades away and i know it's fluorescence because it can be um there's a refractory period when there's really bright filaments that end up in that area before uh, that point which sounds kind of complicated but if you look at the actual footage you'll know what i'm saying what i'm saying is not wrong it's correct um that light can accommodate non-line of sight detection from the air even if it's behind a building or a tree if it's up to like 15 degrees 10 to 15 degrees they can still even exchange information at that angle using a li-fi instead of wi-fi if they're using ultraviolet light anyway i'm going to conclude this video this is where I'm at right now at 2924. I've shown you the LED panel, which pretty much looks the same. I'm actually surprised. Um, I don't know if it's changed. Maybe if it has changed, like maybe one LED in the white part on the really purple one. I'm actually surprised. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see it when those LEDs turn purple or if they do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video.